All right, so this will be our last example for the chapter on sequences in series. Um, we're going to solve an initial value problem. So we have a differential equation. If you've done the chapter on differential equations, you know at least two ways to solve this thing because it's both separable and linear, right? So there are simple techniques for solving this differential equation. So we have other ways to solve this. So what's the point? Well, the point is we want to show how we can use Taylor series to also solve this, use power series techniques. And that's going to be useful because when you encounter differential equations in practical settings, right, if you're doing mathematical modeling in chemistry or physics or wherever you might be doing it, um, typically when you're solving initial value problems or differential equations generally, they're not always so nice and neat. And even if, if you go on to take a course in differential equations, you might see things like power series techniques. Um, you might see a lot of techniques that lead you to believe that you can always get these nice, neat solutions to differential equations in terms of familiar functions. But it's not actually realistic, right? The way you tend to actually have to solve in things like differential equations in practice is using numerical methods, using power series techniques, right? Uh, using techniques that give you an answer even if that answer doesn't have a nice, clean expression in terms of familiar functions. So how do we proceed? Well, what we do is we suppose that we can represent our solution y as a power series. Okay. I don't know what it is, but we, we suppose we have a power series representation. Um, there is one thing I can say about this right away. Right? Think about expanding this. I have c0 plus c1 times x plus c2x squared, c3x cubed, and so on. Um, if I put x equal to 0, the only thing that survives is that constant term, c0, right? So c0 is the initial condition, right? 4, okay? So I know that. Uh, the other thing I know is that y prime, well, on the one hand, I can take the derivative term by term, right? I get the sum, and going from, well, it won't be 0, it'll be 1, right? And going from 1 to infinity of n, cn x to the n minus 1, right? n comes down, so the n equals 0 term is gone, right? The constant term goes away. And, but we can re-index this. If I drop that index by 1, I've got to increase the value of n over here to compensate. So I can write that as the sum. n going from 0 to infinity, n plus 1, cn plus 1, x to the n, right? So I have that. But on the other hand, y prime is supposed to be equal to 2y. So this is supposed to be equal to 2 times the sum, and going from 0 to infinity, cn, x to the n. And I can bring the 2 inside. So I can write that as 2 cn, x to the n. OK? So what does that get me? Well. Compare, compare the two power series, right? They start at the same value. Powers of x are the same, right? All of that lines up. So it must be that this also aligns with that, right? If you have two power series, equality of power series means equality of coefficients for each power of x. So from that equality of power series, I can conclude that, um, well, again, I know that c0 is equal to 4, and for n bigger than or equal to 0, cn plus 1, if I divide by n plus 1, cn plus 1 is going to be 2 cn over n plus 1. Okay? So we can use that. We have a recursion formula now. We can use that to start generating terms in the sequence. Right? So c1 will be 2c0 over, over 1. So I get 2 times 4, I get, I get 8. c2 is going to be 2c1 over 2. I get c1 again, I get 8, right? c3, I get 2c2 over 3. So I get 16 over 3. c4, I get... 2c4 over 4, okay, so, or sorry, c3 over 4, so 
So that's half of C3, so I get 8 over 3, and so on. So I can generate all the terms that gives me my power series, that gives me my function. But maybe we're not so satisfied with that. We'd like to actually identify this function if we can, right, based on what we know about Taylor series, Maclaurin series. Um, and this doesn't seem to be jumping out at us, but maybe the mistake that we made, maybe the mistake that we made is we've reduced our patterns, our, our fractions, right? We've seen this before. If we're looking for patterns and sequences. If you reduce your fractions, you can't see those patterns anymore. So let's start thinking about what, what do these actually look like, right? We have C0 is 4, C1 is 2 times 4, divided by 1, put that 1 in there. Um, C2 is going to be 2 times 2, so 2 squared times 4, over 1 times 2. And then we get 2, we multiply by 2 again, so now it's 2 cubed times 4, and we divide by 3, so 1 times 2 times 3, and then we multiply by 4 again, 2 to the 4 times 4, over 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. And at this point, we can probably see the pattern, right? So this is for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, and so in general, it looks to me like Cn is 4 times 2 to the n over n factorial. Okay? So that means if we come back to here, that means that y, if we pull out the 4, y is 4 times the sum, and going from 0 to infinity, 2 to the n, x to the n, over n factorial. Okay? Well, I can write that as, what can I write that as? I can write this as simply 2x to the n. So I have 2x to the n over n factorial. Well, that's like replacing x by 2x in the formula for the exponential function, right? In the Taylor series expansion for the exponential function. Um, so what we actually get then is that y, y is equal to 4 times e to the 2x, okay, and we have our solution.